Marine Le Pen, I've always, I haven't met her yet. Um, our reporter on the ground uh, w did a great job at interviewing her. How dangerous is a woman that actually has very extreme views, but that comes across as very personable, very amicable, very smart? I is she going to be the next president of France? I think there are several elements here. I mean, first of all, obviously she has massive appeal in France right now. The main reason is that the economy is not doing well and the mainstream parties aren't doing well. Um, and she's doing a really good job in, in trying to make his, her party and her party's views seem normal. So she has, has a big appeal for the voters in France. On the other hand, the French presidential system means that, she, that you have a second round runoff, which means it's, let's say, almost impossible for her to actually become president of France. So the influence that she will have will be through other ways. It will be through influencing what the mainstream parties do. Um, it will be through influencing the, the debate rather than being actually in charge. And so she, the, the, and that's actually that's our Twitter question of the day. How much will Marine Le Pen have over European policies? And as you say, even if she doesn't become uh, president of France, is it immigration? Does that force the issue to other party leaders to, to take it more seriously and, and to have more extreme views? I think we've seen it in many countries, like in the UK as well, right, that um, mainstream parties feel forced to address or maybe not address certain issues, like, for example, immigration, um, where mainstream, where, sorry, where populist parties are having a really easy time gathering votes and, and just running on a very populist platform against immigration. Um, and with the Eurosceptic, with a Eurosceptic attitude, for example, and I think mainstream parties feel forced to address this because obviously they're very afraid to lose their voters. Uh, Paolo, you spend a day a week actually in France. What are your views on Marine Le Pen? She, she has dangerous views. I mean, you can't say it otherwise, but she comes as, uh, across as so likable. Yes, she comes across very likable. She has been capable of getting lots of votes from the socialist, which means that what she says is appealing to left mm -hmm. voters, uh, particularly the working class in France. And, uh, but I agree, the, the, her chances to become president of France are, are essentially nil. Uh, but she can influence a lot, and she does it already, uh, on themes like immigration, which are extremely sensitive o o across Europe and in France in particular. Mm -hmm. What's your main concern for, for France? Because we're having actually this economic, and if I'm, I'll ask the same of you, we have economic indicators that are not bad, but this is a country in need of economic reform, structural reforms. Yes, it needs structural reforms, uh, even if uh, uh, France is performing not too badly. Uh, at least the last numbers I've seen are quite encouraging. And uh, France remains a, a country which has at least uh, 20 companies which are at the global level leaders which is extremely important today uh, so I, I believe that with some reforms France will start again to be a, a one positive element in the European economy. All right, Femke, actually, I just need to alert our viewers that uh, the British monarch is on the move in Germany. So we're just seeing live pictures there of her car. She's being brought to the official residence of the president of uh, Germany. We were, um, you know, discussing with Paolo what she would be talking about with Angela Merkel. Um, I wonder whether she would talk, Femke, about actually Marine Le Pen and, and, and the place of... If you look at Germany and Britain, they're the closest in terms of economic reforms and whether they would discuss what happens to the rest of Europe, including France. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure especially also the question of the British referendum is a big subject obviously between the UK and Germany right now. Um, David Cameron is expected to present his, his proposals um, at the European Council tomorrow in a bit more detail. So I would expect that that's an important subject. Yeah, uh, Paolo, I mean, we're just seeing pictures, so we will see uh, the British monarch, um, of course, being, you know, coming out of the car with Prince Philip. I if you were Angela Merkel's advisor, mm -hmm. is there a message that you would want to give the Queen? She she's, of course, she she's not an, an executive director of Britain PLC, <laughs> no. but she certainly has the year of David Cameron. No, le le uh, certainly she does. Uh, let's say, I... I do not believe that Europe, now uh, the European, in, in particular Germany, should give too many concessions to David Cameron, because otherwise the whole spirit of Europe will be lost. Uh, it's a fine tuning of what David Cameron needs in order to win the referendum in the UK, but still preserving a future for a European Union.
Do you think he'll renegotiate enough, Femke, um, David Cameron, to keep the support of his backbenchers? He, he needs to be credible, and at the same time, he needs Angela Merkel and the rest of Europe to sign off on this. Right. I think it's, let's say, to, to look at it from the other perspective, all other European countries, especially Germany and France, with whom he's negotiating, they have an interest in giving him just enough that allows him to persuade his voter, voters to stay in the EU. So I think they will find a compromise which will make him confident that he can defend the European project and win the referendum. Famke, thank you so much uh, for now. Famke Kommuller there, Europe analyst at Eurasia Group and Rothschild's um, deputy chairman, Paolo Scaroni.